Hi, this is uh, Rushab here and welcome to session 5 of the Frappe Developer Training and Scene Screencast. Uh, this screencast has been jointly recorded by Anand and me and um, we are walking through a process of creating a Frappe app. The app that we have taken as, a, as an example is an app to manage and record meetings so you can define agenda attendees uh, minutes of a meeting and we've already created the app created the doc types we've added a few validations um, and now let's do more functionality let us look at the feature where we invite users uh, to attend the meeting uh, using email so can want to just take a moment and quickly and em emphasize uh, that uh, you should really do whatever you are doing uh, on your own machine. Uh, if you have not completed the previous tutorial, then this tutorial will really not make sense for you. Um, it's really fun building apps on Frappe and you should uh, try doing it yourself. If you ever need help, uh, you can uh, refer the source at which is at github.com slash frappe slash meeting. Uh, you can also ask questions on the discussion forum and join on chat uh, on Gator. So what we can do is we can create a button that will um, write after the agenda that, that, that we can email the agenda to all the attendees uh, who, have, uh, who have been added on the record. So inside the agenda section, let us create a button and, uh, this, uh, and let us write uh, an event uh, next to the button. Um, uh, write an event for the button to send an email uh, using Frappe to all the attendees. Um, so the invite button is uh, should actually be inside the attendees uh, tab. Okay, let us just create a new tab for invitation, a new section for inv invitation because we would want to customize the uh, welcome message we want to send out to all the potential attendees of the meeting. So let's just create a new section uh, where we have a text editor field which will help us compose the invitation message. And then, uh, and then we can create a button to uh, actually send the message to the user. So, so now that we have the invitation section, we open, we have an invitation message here we can type in Hello, welcome to the meetings, the agenda, uh, etc. And then we can uh, have a button next week. So now let's just quickly create the button. So, so the but so uh, as you might have noticed, uh, there are some fields in a doc type that have database columns uh, associated with them, and some don't. For example, section and column breaks don't have columns associated them and so do buttons. So when you create a button field it uh, appears at the place uh, in the form where uh, based on the layout and but it does not have any uh, field related to it, uh, any database uh, uh, column related. So here we are we've created a uh, send email button. Now let's quickly um, write the code to handle the event uh, for sending buttons. So again, we open our JS file, the meeting JS, and we write a new uh, event for uh, sending uh, sending an email. So the way you write an e uh, event handler is you just uh, create a new um, uh, you just create a new property which is which is exactly same name as the field name. For example, then the field name of the button is send emails. So as you, you would have already seen that uh, the names of fields are automatically created from the labels. You can, uh, you can manually define the field names or you can create them from the labels. Uh, so now let us quickly write, um, uh, let us quickly write um, uh, the method for this. So we let us send the email when the status is planned. If the status is already something else, then there is no point sending the email. So again, we can define a, a method for uh, sending this email. 
another pattern that we have started using is uh, using a file called API creating a Python module called API so that all uh, methods that we call uh, from uh, from various clients uh, can be added in the API file. So let us pass the name of the meeting as as an argument and and then we can also define a callback method. So this method will be called after the meeting has been uh, uh, after the function has been executed. So in, in the meeting module, uh, meeting app, let us just create a file called api.py and then let us just uh, write out the, uh, the method name, send invitation emails. So what we are passing to this method is the meeting parameter. Um, again, when you uh, pass arguments to uh, methods, they are automatically mapped uh, by Frappe. So, whatever arguments you pass in the Frappe.call are automatically mapped as uh, arguments in the method. So, let us again load the meeting object with the uh, Frappe.get talk. The uh, so you just give the name of the doc type and name of the document and that becomes um, and, and that uniquely identifies that particular object. So we can double check that the status is planned. Then we can uh, send the meeting, uh, send the email. So Frappe again has a, a built-in function uh, called frappe.sendmail that will automatically send emails using an email account that you can either set up inside after login or uh, you can set up using your site config parameter. So let us find out what arguments does frappe.sendmail take by searching on the frappe documentation. So here is a frappe.sendmail method. Um, Yeah, so here is the frappe.sendmail method. Let us quickly copy the arguments uh, so that we can create uh, the we can create the email from the email document. You give the name of the recipients, the sender, the subject uh, message, reference doc type, and reference name. Is that every email you send should ideally be referenced to a document? This will uh, help. Uh, us keep track of all emails that have been sent from the particular meeting and when you set as bulk equal to true it means that it does not immediately send the email but it sends it through a queue and that the emails are actually sent by the background workers uh, using salary um, this uh, by setting reference talk type and reference name we also uh, have uh, a built in feature that allows the user to unsubscribe from further emails relating to this meeting so if you pass the name of the doc type and the document then it will keep a track if the user has unsubscribed any further updates to that particular meeting So that's it uh, by writing this method uh, um, uh, then email will be an email will be added to the queue and uh, what we also want to set the status uh, so let us also keep a track if invitations have been sent by adding a new status uh, for the meeting called invitation sent and then after sending the email we automatically set the status status is in and then to and we need to whitelist this method again now since this method has been whitelisted it can be called by any uh, logged in user but uh, once uh, 
uh, but we also need to check whether that particular user has the permission to um, uh, whether that user has the permission to send an email uh, to to access uh, uh, to to send email because emails are separate permissions of a doc type. So if, if the user has email permission only then can this uh, method be called. So the other big advantage of this method is that all these methods are also available using a REST API kind of an interface uh, where you can call this method using code too. So here what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, the check permission method of the document to uh, verify whether the user has permissions on that document or not. So if the user has permissions on the document, then they will uh, uh, then then they can send an email. So after setting the status, we also need to save the meeting so that the updated status has uh, gets saved in the document. And if the meeting is not planned, then we uh, we just update the user that we cannot send emails unless the status of the meeting. And if the user uh, successfully uh, is a, is able to create the emails, then we can just send or also give a feedback that the emails have been sent. Uh, we can also show and hide the button based on the status. Uh, if the emails are not, if the, if the status is not planned, then the button should not appear. So that can be done by editing that depends on property in the top type. Uh, and if the meeting status is not planned, the button will not show. So currently this meeting is planned. So, uh, so let's just quickly write out an invitation message that we will send out to everyone. So there we just created the message, uh, welcome message for the meeting. I'm just going to click on send emails and oops, there is an exception. Uh, the exception says that uh, it's looking for an object called run server method. We quickly realized that the trigger, uh, that the event, that uh, the handler that we have set is on meeting attendee and not a meeting. So um, what we need to really do is uh, set the uh, handler on the meeting. Let us move this function uh, uh, to the meeting uh, instead of meeting agenda. And as as again as a uh, standard coding style, we always have the event handlers on the parent before the event handlers on the child uh, fields. So now let us try sending. Uh, by sending emails again and it says hooray invitations uh, have been sent and then we can see the three emails that have been created in the email queue uh, which have all the, which have the invitation method great so that's it for session five and uh, uh, we hope you like the uh, scripting emails now in the next session we'll see how we create that uh, how we manage the navigation the desktop let's create a calendar for the meeting and do more interesting stuff.